First of all, you're asking why do we need specialized venues such as museums or historically black uh, universities uh, and colleges. Let me just say, first of all, you will always need something that helps you understand in depth whatever it is that relates to your identity. It doesn't really matter. But I think we do have to look at how do we also make sure that we are part of the general culture. I think that's critical. I think it does not mean that you isolate yourself in order to understand it. I do think, however, that it has its own purpose. You know, it's important to understand at this point that HBCUs are graduating more black students than any other venue, even though you have many more other schools available. The graduation rate is still highest in that venue. The other is that the matter of role models and identity closely tied. In fact, much of our loss in recent years has resulted from this lack of positive role models visible to the individuals. The role, I have to point out, and it just doesn't mean that I think that segregation, by in, I mean, desegregation was not necessary. It was. But you have to understand the price tag involved in any social movement. There was a price tag that meant that you lost the access to a flow of professionals that could influence young blacks in major ways. And in those days, a lot of the value transmission was carried on by black schools. That loss is still being felt. We haven't recovered from that. We have not found a way to consistently transfer the value system of the earlier blacks that led to so much achievement against the odds to today's youngsters who have every opportunity compared to those and aren't doing nearly so well. See, we didn't have the prison population in those days that we have now. We didn't have the behavior problems in those days that we have now. You have to understand the price tag of any movement. And that is a part of the identity issues that we have talked about here. So when you talk about whether or not there is a need for these institutions, we definitely need them. Uh, but we also need to understand, and museums, for example, you have specialized museums even though you have your general museums. One is because it gives you a chance to focus on perspectives that others might not have. I can look at blackness through a lens, a cultural lens, that some other uh, curator would not look, you see, because they wouldn't have the experiences. I look at it from history, in terms of my history, having grown up in a segregated era versus post-segregated era. That's my experience. I can share that in the way that I present the material. It is why we focused on letting people know what we have done rather than focusing on how we were victimized, you see. Because victimization puts you into a loser position. But looking at your achievements, your contributions in spite of that gives you strength and direction and inspiration. And you need that. All right, I'll tell you about the George Washington Carver Museum in terms of its origins and its purpose, its mission. First, it grew out of a need to, for the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority to find some uh, worthwhile community uh, project that would focus on Dr. Carver and his recognition in a significant way. And at that time, we had no such ambitious goals as a museum. It was, we were thinking more like maybe a bust or whatever. And in the process, we were encouraged by a representative from the Alabama Council on the Arts to broaden our scope and to consider a museum. And that's how we got into the project. It was a learn-as-you-go project, and, uh, but we got a lot of help from various organizations and institutions, agencies, and so forth. And it is, this is the initial um, effort. It does have a much broader goal. There is a much broader scope anticipated at some point. But the idea here was, of course, to focus on, as we've said again, providing some insight into the things that Dr. Carver represented. See, Dr. Carver is a wonderful symbol. He symbolizes the achieving part of our culture, the contributing part of our culture, and it's our history. He also uh, is a symbol of the creative and the uh, problem-solving aspects of our history. 
This was a man who actually was creative to the point that he actually entered college as a, an art and music major, which surprises me. He changed to science later. Now, it does not mean that he had not already demonstrated scientific uh, abilities because he had already acquired the nickname the plant doctor. And that was from his experimenting from childhood with plants. Uh, and he was persuaded by the college professors to go back to science, if you will. And he did finish in, in science. But he represents that combination of qualities. And what he really did was to show us how to use science creatively. He stressed the importance of using science as a tool to solve any problem. And we know, of course, his history in using creative thinking in solving agricultural problems in this area, and then some industrial problems when he worked with Ford and Glidden and other industrialists. The other is that um, he also represents the diasporic link of blacks with Africa. His mother was actually owned by the Carvers. And he was then firsthand in touch with the enslavement era, you see. So the diaspora is where we were dispersed from Africa to the Americas, especially during that enslavement era. And we had an opportunity to use Dr. Carver symbolically that way. And you will notice that the exhibit does point out as you move along, showing how we, for example, initiated not only uh, as a group from Africa, but that as the human race evolved from Africa, eventually, and, and you'll see that reflected in the exhibits when we talk about our legacies. <laughs>